Degenerates, and welcome to another Duck Hunt Guide. So today we're going to be talking about Duck Hunt Side B, which is the Clay Pigeon. So now this move is Duck Hunt's best combo starter. Not only does it lead to high damaging combos upwards of 50%, um, but it also does lead to some very, very good solid kill confirms too. Probably the most consistent ones that Duck Hunt has out of his entire kit. So learning how to use this move properly, at least as far as when you land it, is pretty crucial to Duck Hunt's kit. Uh, the other thing too is it did get a lot more utility due to some buffs that it has in Smash 1. But overall, something you need to know is this move is not a new control by any means. The only time you can somewhat consider that is with matchups with Heavy since they have a really hard time avoiding it. This is not a move you ever want to be spamming as it does last for 59 frames I believe. And because of that, it makes it really easy to just jump over the, that move and then just go ahead and punish him. So you want to be using this move specifically for landings or if you know like they're going to air dodge to the ground, if they're going to land with attack. Because now with this move, if they break it, then it also has those particles that you saw at the end over there where it'll just hit them if the second that they try breaking it. So it's a very versatile projectile and it's extremely effective with what it does. It can get components off of you, it can stop their aggression. Um, and like turn their advantage state into actually yours as well or just reset the neutral too. So the main things that I want to be com uh, covering in this guide are the combos that you can do specifically with the clay pigeon. This guide is going to be broken down into several departments. Um, the main thing that we're going to do is focus on the general combos. So we're going to look at the low percent combos, then the combos you do at mid percents, then the high percent ones, and then the other distinction we're going to do are the combos that are unique to fast followers, as there's some things that I just discovered with them that I think will be fairly useful to use with these fast follower matchups. Now with the low percent combos, the main position thing that you want is you want solid damage and you also want good positioning. So this combo that I am going to show off is going to be the one that you're going to be utilizing most often to just get that solid damage right there and then that way you're able to push them pretty far towards the edge of the stage. Whenever you do it, they should their back should be at the ledge at that moment or if not off stage. So it's the most damage you can do and the best carrying that you can do, at least consistently. Now a very important thing to note over here is when you do get to this fair at the very end, you want to make sure that you're fading away from it because you do not have frame advantage when you hit them. So you fade back so that way you make yourself safe and you reset the neutral. You can get a free setup off of that and if their back is towards the ledge, no matter what, you know they have to come towards you. So that way you can plan for them to come back and then like throw them out, launch a can or just like you know, wall them out with fares or whatever you need to do. So overall, after you do that fair at uh, like 0 to 20, 30%, make sure you pull back so then that way you can just kind of reset the situation. If they happen to be off stage, then you can start a ledge trap scenario there. So make sure that pullback on the end of that fair is pretty important, unless you know that they have a hobbit of air dodging, jumping away, or something along the lines of that. If you know they like to press a button afterwards, always fade back. And if you don't know, just fade back to keep yourself safe, unless you're fighting something like a... Actually, no, always just fade back to keep yourself safe. All right, so the next combos that we're gonna be talking about are from the 30% to 60% range. So from, I would say 20 to 50%, he get, Duck Hunt has this really weird um, in between during that period where he doesn't have the best combos in the world. He kind of has like two piecers or like three piecers, like Clay Pigeon Dash Attack, uh, Clay Pigeon Up Tilt Up Air. And then um, also some other things that I'll showcase. I'll make sure to go over those again um, later on. Where you're gonna get damage and you're gonna get more positioning opportunities there, but you're not able to lead into your strongest combos just yet or able to get the kill at these moments. So these are some things that you can do off of these. Figure out what works best for each stage and the positioning, uh, also for each character too, because sometimes it's better to have that character there, sometimes it's better to have their back to the edge, sometimes it's better to have them off stage. So figure out what moves will get them where and which one will be most optimal to you. All right, so these last combos that we're gonna be talking about for the uh, low mid percents are gonna be ones that are exclusive to fast followers. So with these, um, these mostly just go into smash attacks 
um, which can actually lead to early KOs if you are lucky enough. Uh, the other one too is we have one that leads into a down tilt setup where it'll lead to a tech chase situation. So that'd be look really cool flashy if you wanted to do that down tilt into a can. And then that is the way to go. But it's a very, very tight window for it. It's like 20 to 40%. And when you get to 30 to 40, when you get to 40%, you have to use the sour spot. When you're at 20%, you need to use the strong fare. So when you see that combo, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, the main thing with these is you can do uh, clay pigeon to smash attacks. So that one, up smash, that one you can use on basically the entire class, but down smash is one that's exclusive to the fast class. So as you can see, I'll do that turn around. As you can see with this, you can get like a lot of good distance on there. So it's a good way to throw the opponent behind you, especially if your back's to the ledge. And you can just kind of reverse the situation there. And I think it's better doing that than a grab, because let's say they DI really bad. They could be really far off stage because that final hit is actually extremely strong. So depending on who you're fighting at that moment, that might be one of the strongest things you can go for. And you can also do Clay Pigeon to F Smash. And you know, if you've ever landed a Duck Hunt F Smash before, you know exactly how strong that move is. So if you are able to do it at these percents, um, specifically at 60% at the ledge, you actually might be able to get a kill off of that. So it's a really good, important thing to know. So definitely make sure you go practice these next uh, combos that you see coming up. Alright, so the last group of combos that we're going to be talking about are the Duck Hunt Dinner combos. So these are whenever you do two clay pigeons in together and it's a true combo. So after that, you're able to do literally any move that you want. You can even chain a third clay pigeon together, which you'll see in a bit. And um, it's, But that one you can only really do if you have the space permitting. And also normally after those first two clay pigeons, the third one kind of has to be a DI read in order to land that one. But if you do land it, then you are going to be able to do a 50 plus percent combo off of it. Pre-patch, um, before 2.0 came out, it was basically pretty free to do those three clay pigeon combos as long as you had the space. Uh, but now with the nerf, it is, a little, it is a little bit harder to do, but not hard to do by any means as long as you know how your opponent likes to DI. Um, so we, each one, each uh, finisher is themed to a, a different food item. So the nair is called the dumpling twirl, the back air is the drumstick, up air is the wing supreme, the down air is the chicken dunks, and then if you do the fish, it's the chicken bites, the duck bites. When you do the bites, you're just doing damage. If you want to finish it off with a fair, that means you know you can't kill them at all and you just want to get them off stage and you want to do damage. Uh, bear is going to be the way that you're going to finish them. The good thing with bear is you can normally kill any opponent at 120 guaranteed with it, uh, even heavies too. So good things to keep in mind there. So these double CP combos are going to be kind of your main bread and butter for getting a lot of damage. Um, just because... Uh, you know, when you do a clay pigeon, it does 14% by itself, or well, 15% almost by itself. So by having two of those together, you're basically getting close to 30, and then you do it off with an aerial, it's guaranteed 40% every single time. And uh, when you do it at these later percents, you can still get, like, you can get kills off of these. So like double clay pigeon up air is a very famous uh, uh, combo kill. We even had it in Smash 4. Double Clay Pigeon Back Air is the one that's used a bit more over in this game just because Bear is really strong. And Up Air did get nerfed a little bit in terms of kill power in this game. So Double CP Bear will get you those kills a lot earlier generally and you're also carrying them across the stage too so you're closer to that horizontal blast zone especially on those uh, small blast zone stages and that's going to be helping you out quite a bit so make sure you practice these combos um, specifically the double ones the third one is more if you're good at reads the double ones are basically a hundred percent guaranteed as long as you get the practice and timing down and you'll you'll kill really early and you'll get a lot of damage every single time you land just one side b
So the last things I need to talk about is just your kill confirms. When you have them at 120%, just go for CP bear. There's no reason to risk it for a combo. For mid weights, you want to go for CP up air around 135% to guarantee the kill. And then if you're fighting heavy weights, that's generally going to be around 140% CP up air will net you the kill guaranteed. Alright, so the next thing we're going to talk about is the mix-up that you can have off of CP, which is known as the CP drop. This was something that we had back in Smash 4. Basically, the common sort of it is very simple. Instead of automatically um, detonating the clay pigeon, you wait for it, you do a smash attack or any move instead, and then you have the clay pigeon there to cover you. And, um, so that way, if you miss your smash attack or the shield it, that way when they get hit, they shield your smash attack, the clay pigeon hits them so that way you should be safe. So in this case, this is what it kind of looks like, so now he's going to shield. And then, oh wow, I actually just got a shield puck instead. What he's going to do is, yeah, so we're going to hit him with the clay pigeon. Now he's going to shield. Now we have that to cover ourselves, and then if he's stuck in the shield, then we're able to at least get our frame advantage or get neutral frame advantage afterwards. So then that way we don't have to deal with them um, punching us for whiffing our smash attacks. So it's a very important thing too. So if you hit them at a higher percent and then they dismiss, then you can do an up smash instead, or you can read a spot dodge. If they spot dodge it, you can cover that spot dodge with the CP detonation. And just overall, it's a really good thing to throw out every now and then, just because like most people aren't ready. It's like, wait, what? And then, boom, you have it. So in this case, it looks like the clay vision actually travels a little bit farther than the opponent than it used to before. Uh, back in Smash 4, it would stay basically right on top of them. But in this game, it seems like if you're a smaller character, it can go past you pretty good. Let me try the soft toss. Okay. So in this case, for this setup, you're going to want to go for the soft toss CP instead of the hard toss. Um, to show you the difference again, hard toss goes behind him pretty significantly, where if you go for soft toss, it lands right there. And then in this case, if he shields it... And now, yeah, you have frame advantage over him. So... That's going to be the main way you want to do it. Do a soft, If you're going to go for this uh, mix-up, go for the soft toss CP and then do it. If it's a big character, then the hard toss is perfectly fine. But if they're skinny, like Mega Man, Marth, Lucina, the soft toss is going to be the one that you're going to want to go for in order to get that CP drop mix-up on them. So it's all just delaying the timing so that way you make yourself safe if your smash attack mix-up uh, or if you whiff and guess their option wrong. So that's all it is. Once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're finding this content to be really useful, really helpful, and you're really enjoying what I'm putting out there. Um, definitely, of course, I'm never going to be going back to my daily uploads that I used to have in the past. Probably going to be going to weekly. Hopefully, I can get two a week. Probably going to be one. It might be less than that. It's really going to depend on what my schedule allows. And guys, as always, make sure you follow me on Twitter to know when videos are coming out. Uh, also, I do have an Instagram as well if you want to see some good food pictures. You'll see some of them on the Twitter, but the Instagram is always going to be the best place to check them out. Uh, the other thing too is don't forget to support Come to Papa. We do have that donation drive going on the webpage. You'll find a link to it in the description below. So that way we can get our boy Rido out there. We can finally get some really good duck hunt action out here in the US. I know uh, if you guys are watching these videos, I know you're excited to see them duck hunt action. And you know, the way that we made an impact last time was by bringing out these Japanese players and really showcasing what this character can do. So guys, if you do want to see that, please go check out the Come to Papa page. Page. You can support it by directly donating to the goals itself, or you can buy the merchandise that's there. So we have the Come to Papa Japan uh, team jerseys and also uh, posters that you can get, as well as the Come to Papa 3 merchandise as well. And don't forget that you can also use the Duck Hunt Discord uh, store link to buy merchandise there. It's more Duck Hunt related, and all proceeds from that shop will go directly towards that goal. So that way, if you want to contribute that way, you're more than welcome to do so. As always, thank you again so much for supporting. <laughs> I never realized how big some of my videos got, specifically the guide. So, you know, on roadmap to much bigger things. So hopefully we can keep up the steam. And as always, make sure you guys take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.